Hello everyone. Today's topic is going to be about ocarinas. Ocarina is a type of woodwind instrument that makes sound based upon an empty chamber with wind blowing through it. Ocarina, the word itself, is Italian for little goose. The instrument is actually very old type of instrument, except obviously it has changed throughout the ages. Ocarinas were traditionally made out of clay or ceramic, although they can be made out of other materials such as plastic, metal, or bone. There are three main types of ocarinas. They are the transverse, the pendant, and the inline. There's also another uncommon type of ocarina known as the multi-chambered ocarina which is designed in a way that you can switch between which chambers in the ocarina are being played based upon which scale of notes you'd want to hit. The first one I'm going to discuss is the transverse ocarina, which is also known as a sweet potato ocarina because of what it looks like. Now I have an ocarina myself, and this specific one is a, which is a transverse ocarina. This ocarina was the first ocarina I've ever owned. You can see it's a little chipped here and it was made in West Berlin, so I'm going to assume that this ocarina was produced before the Berlin Wall fell, otherwise they wouldn't have specified which Berlin it came from. This ocarina is in the key of C and is a transverse ocarina. As you can see, it's played horizontally and blown to the mouthpiece and the hands are held like so. And an ocarina's pitch is controlled not by which hole you hold down, but the total sur surface area of how much is being covered. So if I can say I'll cover this, I'll uncover hole number two on the ocarina and it plays this note. I'll cover hole number two and then uncover hole number four. Different holes are being uncovered but the sound is nearly the same because the general surface area is the same. That's how ocarinas work. Now this is a transverse. The next type of ocarina is a pendant ocarina, and the reason why they call it the pendant ocarina is because it's small enough and light enough to be carried around your neck. Now, there are two types of pendant ocarinas, the English pendant and then the Peruvian pendant. The Peruvian pendant is usually has more holes than an English pendant, and it typically is made out of various designs and always out of clay. Today I'm going to show you the English pendant, which just happens to be the type of pendant that I own. As you can see, it's quite small. This particular pendant plays in soprano C, and it only has four holes on the top and two holes on the bottom, not counting the mouse mouthpiece, because that doesn't get covered up. Now, the beauty of the English pendant is that with only six holes, it can play an entire octave plus one note, so that's 13 notes. This particular pendant is very high pitch, and I, I like it a lot because no matter where I go on the scale, it sounds quite clear. So here's the deepest note it can play, and the highest note it can play. It's very squealy on the highest note, but if you just go a few notes down, it sounds perfectly fine. I only have two types of ocarinas to show today, but I'm going to continue talking about the next two types, which are the inline and the multi-chambered. I've already covered the multi-chambered, and I'll provide a link in the description where you can purchase or look at some of these ocarinas yourself. Now, the next type of ocarina is known as the inline ocarina, and the reason why it's like this is that the, lo the holes, based on their size and the surface area they covered, are put in a line, because typically in an ocarina, it doesn't matter which type of hole you uncover except for the size of said hole, because it controls the amount of surface area, which I covered before. So, the inline is designed specifically so that the entire scale of notes is set in order. It's very easy to play, and is probably the easiest of all of the ocarinas to play, and it's the quickest to pick up. Those are all the different types of ocarinas that I have to show you. This one, though, is my other transverse ocarina. This one comes from STL Ocarina, which I will also provide a link to. And this one was supposed to be a Hobbit-designed ocarina because they're making themed ones based off of Lord of the Rings because of the new movie The Hobbit. This one has 12 holes, which is different from the other transverse that I showed you, which is a 10-hole ocarina. And it can play, well, the 10-hole can play 14 notes, which is one more than this pendant. This one can play two notes lower than this one can. Obviously, it's much larger, and it has another hole here 
which provides me a whole step or a half step depending on the combination that I use. Ocarinas in contemporary use have been made very popular because of a game from 1994 known as The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. This is the cover art right here. It was for Nintendo 64. And in the game, the ocarina played a very important aspect as being the machine that allowed the hero to travel through time and manipulate things such as weather or even people. Ocarinas are incredibly easy to pick up and start playing. It's just incredibly hard to master. Right now, I'm going to demonstrate a song that my sister wrote for me, and she calls it Owl. I hope you enjoyed this video about ocarinas, and I hope that I've inspired you to do the research on your own to learn more about them, and maybe even how to play, and possibly pick one up. They're not too expensive, and they're really fun instruments to play. I'm the Bard Ken. Have a nice day.